Hi, uh, my name is Luku Kaluge Prasad Pereira. I'm an associate professor from University of Tromsø. Um, so the title of this presentation is uh, Topological Services Based Advanced Data Analytics to Support uh, Industrial Digitalization in Shipping. So this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, I will give you a brief introduction, then the objective of this presentation. So the main core of this uh, work consists of industrial digitalization based on advanced data analytics. Um, so here I'm talking about how this data analytics developed on top of these topological surfaces, and finally some, some computational results and, and conclusions. So the future vessels will be supported with smart systems uh, with industrial IoT to uh, achieve the required uh, integrity standard in ship navigation. Um, so this can also be seen as the system reliability levels, uh, especially uh, under this navigation and automation systems of these vessels. Uh, since we are talking about these autonomous vessels and these remote control facilities, I think this uh, reliability level of these automation and navigation systems will be really important uh, because at, at some point systems are making various decisions and there will be uh, some amount of decision support features will be developed on top of these vessels. Uh, so to achieve these uh, uh, integrity levels in the ship navigation, uh, we should have adequate uh, amount of industrial IOTs on board the vessels, and then this uh, IOT should collect uh, ship performance and navigation information as big data sets. Um, so you can see this big data will create a bridge between these decision support features and then these vessel navigation and automation systems. Eventually, that will support us to uh, achieve the required integrity standard in future vessels. So here we are trying to visualize the industrial digitalization in, in a block diagram. Um, as you can see, uh, vessels and ship systems uh, has these IOTs. Uh, these IOT collect big data. And then this big data go through a, a, a data management layer. Uh, and then eventually we should analyze these data sets to uh, extract useful information. And that can be done by uh, data analytics. However, the 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 path from data management to the data analytics will not be a, a straight path um, due to uh, various uh, data handling challenges. Often these are uh, called as a data volume, velocity, uh, data uh, variety, and data veracity issues. Uh, we believe that data volume and velocity issues can be uh, addressed by uh, data management layers. And then I think there are quite a lot of tools being developed to overcome some of the challenges. Uh, but when you talk, talk, when you're thinking about data uh, variety and veracity issues, uh, variety is uh, related to the different forms of data. Veracity is related to the quality of the data. Uh, this data analytics should support uh, enough solutions to overcome such challenges. Um, on the other hand, this domain knowledge will also play an important role in data analytics. Uh, our eventual objective would be to extract useful information from the data sets and then create advanced knowledge. Uh, some part of that advanced knowledge will go back to the domain knowledge and the knowledge create this industrial intelligence and that intelligence will be used towards smart decisions in ship navigation and ship system operations. Uh, there are two main uh, directions we see uh, uh, is important with respect to such type of applications. One is this energy efficiency and emission control requirements. The other one is this remote control and of autonomous navigation uh, requirement. Uh, data veracity is an important concept that we would like to study under this type of uh, studies. Uh, Generally, what is referred to as this uh, erroneous data, data conditions within, within a data set. Uh, of course, these are the data anomalies. Uh, often, we categorize these data anomalies into uh, system, sensor faults or system abnormal events. Uh, sensor faults may be related to a failure of uh, some type of uh, IoT unit. And ship system abnormal event may relate to some degradation conditions of the uh, vessel or, or in the ship systems. 
this type of a classification should be done uh, during your data analysis process because the main reason would be uh, we have we can decide whether we uh, we can remove or recover such erroneous data. Um, in some situations, of course, we can recover uh, data anomalies. And uh, we believe this is a fundamental issue and a fundamental challenge when you're analyzing uh, big data sets in the shipping industry. And often uh, such type of issues being overlooked by the research community. Um, however, that might influence on the, uh, that might degrade the uh, respect to data analysis and, and its its outcome. Machine learning and AI create the fundamental basis uh, towards these uh, data analytics. So machine learning can be considered as a subset of uh, artificial intelligence in the field of computer science. In uh, generally, uh, this area is uh, uh, consists of uh, various types of neural networks. So these networks has the ability to learn from uh, various data sets. Uh, neural networks been considered as a black box approach in, in 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 old days because the main reason was we never had a good idea about how these uh, structures will relate to the uh, physical systems. Uh, so the theories in classical mechanics will never be able to interpret through these type of networks. But there are recent developments in uh, deep neural networks will find uh, uh, better solutions towards uh, such type of issues. So, so I would say uh, this uh, neural networks no longer going to be a black box approach, rather the internal structures of these uh, deep neural networks, especially I'm referring to autoencoders, uh, will make sense with respect to the physical uh, laws. Um, so here we are considering the linear version of deep learning, which is this uh, linear autoencoders. Um, so there is a relationship between these uh, structures of the linear autoencoders and then uh, multiple input, multiple output uh, systems in, in, in output physical systems. The, the, the relationship is both share these something called the singular values and singular vectors. Um, so we used to interpret uh, multiple input, multiple output physical systems through singular vectors and singular values. And then these structures also part of the auto encoders. So at this point, you can realize what this linear token coders is learning from the uh, respective data sets is its physical laws. So no longer uh, a deep uh, learning or this um, neural networks we can consider as a, a black box approach. Rather, I think it's it's now white box approach. We are now, uh, we are now understand uh, how these structures look like and what these structures, how these structures are related to uh, physical systems. So as I have mentioned, autoencoders auto can be uh, considered as a, a representation of physical theories developed under uh, classical mechanics. Here I am uh, showing a basic overview of an autoencoder. These autoencoders has two sides. One is this encoder side. Uh, the other one is the decoder side. Here we are proposing this encoder side should be developed under in an onboard vessel. And the decoder side should be developed in a show-based data center. Uh, so the basic feature would be, uh, you can see there is a larger amount of parameters are getting into the encoder side. Uh, but the outcome would be a much smaller data set. So there's a data compression or reduction of parameters uh, being uh, done under the encoder side. And then such type of a data set uh, can be transferred through uh, uh, communication channels to the onshore. And when onshore receive this uh, much reduced data set, it can expand it back to the original data set by considering this uh, compression mechanism. Uh, so this compression mechanism is the important part of the auto encoder. So, so pretty much most of the data analytics we are proposing under this study is based on this uh, linear version of uh, deep learning. At some point, we even close these as a digital models. Um, so the, the basic physical laws we already knew from classical mechanics can be accommodated into these auto encoders, especially when you're doing this uh, compression. 
uh, we can use such type of a knowledge to develop the compression mechanism. Of course, the compression mechanism is a representation of singular vectors and singular values, but then it's a part of uh, classical mechanics. Uh, so you can imagine this as a data, you are developing a data-driven mathematical models to capture a ship performance and uh, navigation conditions. So let's uh, look into these uh, linear to encoders or the digital model structures. Um, actually, what we, this, this is something what we have noted uh, during our studies. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the digital model presented in this figure consists of three data clusters. And um, these data clusters, uh, the structure of these data clusters being identified by various vectors. So these vectors are the ones which I have described as a singular vectors. And uh, these singular vectors represent the, the covariance directions of these clusters. So, so it's going to be some sort of a data-driven relationships of the ship performance and navigation conditions if we are relating such type of a, a digital models into a, a vessel navigation and ship system uh, operational conditions. Um, so these models will be developed in a really high dimensional space and this dimensional space will be related to the um, various uh, measurements you have taken on board the vessel. So the dimensionality of the digital model will, re will relate it to the respective uh, measurement space. Uh, and when you're developing this uh, digital model, um, it should be uh, developed for a specific purpose because often this can be considered as information model and then this model should have some sort of a model objective. Um, so it can be, for example, it can be uh, to quantify uh, ship navigation and vessel uh, operational conditions uh, and then uh, these type of uh, models can be used towards to uh, for the respective uh, operational uh, decisions. So in this slide uh, we are representing the same digital model in, in a different format. Um, so here you have the, the autoencoders which is also the digital model in, in, a, in a two sectors of encode and decoder side. So as I have mentioned in the encoder side, there's a data compression going on. In the decoder side, data expansion is going on. Um, so there is a, a really um, important uh, activity uh, is being uh, executed under this uh, autoencoder. Uh, what happened in the encoder side is actually you, you compress the data and you identify the structure of the data. And in the decoder side, um, the compressed data you uh, expanded using the same data structure. Uh, so it turned out when you're compressing the data, um, the, 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 some of the data anomalies can be compressed or the erroneous conditions of your data uh, can be uh, compressed from the encoder side. But when you expand it back in the decoder side, uh, some of the data anomalies can be recovered. Of course, there's a little bit of a, a complex process going on, but uh, when data going through this linear autoencoder, this erroneous data can be, uh, the, the quality of the erroneous data can be improved. So that is one of the, another advantage of having these digital models or autoencoders under these uh, advanced data analytics. Here I'm uh, presenting uh, um, advanced data analytic framework. This is an expanded version of the uh, autoencoder structure, uh, which was presented previously. So as you can see, the encoder side can be implemented on board the vessel and the decoder side can be implemented uh, on shore data centers. Uh, under this, there are uh, online and offline services can be uh, uh, implemented. And since these uh, analytics, uh, we are getting into more advanced version of that. Even sometimes we call this advanced massive data analytics. Uh, there are quite a lot of computational resources being required. So we propose to implement uh, such type of analytics under uh, high performance computer platforms um, as uh, described in this figure. And then there are uh, various digital models being developed under various levels. And these models can be interacted to support the required uh, online and offline services. 
Uh, I'm not getting to uh, more detail on this analytics since the uh, time limit is limited. I think uh, you can uh, read how this process can be done in, in, the, in the paper. So let me get into a more detailed version of these uh, digital models. Um, of course, this has been uh, based on these machine learning applications. Uh, machine learning, I would think uh, we can divide it into uh, mainly two sections of regression and classification. Uh, I would like to see this classification and clustering as a, as a, as a single approach uh, because that's something uh, related to the knowledge about the dimensional alter space. Um, so the breakthrough in this machine learning or AI came from uh, classification or clustering type of applications. Um, I would think the regression uh, type of applications may, we may not have seen a high level of success in the regression type of uh, applications. So, so it has been shown that if any engineering problem can be transformed into a classification of clustering problem, uh, you can use this uh, deep learning type of approaches to find the elegant solution into that problem. Um, so so somehow, somehow our digital model structures also based on this uh, data uh, uh, classific. However, our digital model structures based on the combination of this classification and regression approach. Uh, so you, we use the classification approach to cl uh, cluster this data with respect to this, its dimensional space. And then we use this regression type of approach to figure it out the structure of these data sets. So these structures are the singular vectors that I have described uh, previously. Um, so this clustering you can think as a, um, looking into a ship operational conditions and figuring out what sort of a engine uh, operational modes are there. So this uh, data in a ship performance and navigation data set can be clustered into a various engine operational points. And then you can use this uh, structures of the singular vectors to identify uh, the parameter relationships uh, with respect to each uh, engine operational conditions. So in a way, this can be seen as a linearization of uh, highly nonlinear systems around Around, uh, various operational points and then we use singular structure to figure it out what sort of parameter relationships can be associated with this each localized operational conditions of this uh, larger nonlinear system. Uh, so as I have mentioned um, these data clusters can be uh, curved fit into high dimensional surfaces through these uh, singular vectors. Um, so this way you kind of getting a, a vector structure into your uh, data sets also. Um, I mean, there can be uh, uh, nonlinear high dimensional surfaces can be exist in these uh, data sets and then these data sets will have a really uh, complex geometries. Uh, so these complex geometries are the topological surfaces which we have uh, discussed in this paper as the main uh, core of uh, this study. Um, in this uh, ship performance and navigation data set, what we have analyzed, we found uh, simpler uh, topological surfaces where more like uh, uh, data clusters which you can fit into a, a singular vector structure. Of course, there can be highly nonlinear surfaces. You may not be able to do the same thing. In such situations, you probably have to transform these nonlinear surfaces into a, uh, some sort of a, a space where these surfaces exist as a, a linear surfaces, and then you can derive your uh, singular vectors on, on top of that. Um, so um, these data clusters or these uh, topological surfaces may consist of a normal operational conditions of a system. In this case, when you're talking about a vessel, it can be a, a normal vessel operational conditions. And of course, it can be abnormal uh, operational conditions also. So these classifications based on these topological surfaces should be done through the domain knowledge. Uh, of the uh, respective uh, industry. In this case, we are talking about uh, a shipping industrial application. So here I am representing several uh, such topological surfaces in the sense of uh, kernel density functions. Um, so the first plot represent the engine power versus engine speed. So you can see there are three dense data regions in this plot. 
and these dense regions represent uh, the specific engine conditions. So similarly, all other plots representing various uh, ship performance and navigation parameters and how these relationships are uh, being done. So the ultimate objective should be uh, figuring out this type of uh, uh, topology, complex topological surfaces and putting more uh, mathematical, more reasonable mathematical structure into uh, such type of uh, uh, surfaces. So find the conclusion, I think you can go through these points, but the main core of this study was uh, having these digital models uh, based on uh, various topological surfaces and then how these topological surfaces can be identified by uh, a mathematical framework based on machine learning and AI uh, was the uh, presentation or the contribution uh, of this study. Thank you.